This is Mike with OnPoint Software. Welcome to our tutorial on database warehouse, system bridge, and interface concepts and choices. We've taken the best of our material that we've developed and taught at Timberline Summit user conferences and consultant conferences, and we've put this together to introduce you to initial concepts and decisions that you'll have to make for your enterprise solutions. Most important, we hope you'll get a down-to-earth perspective of your choices and how they'll affect the cost-benefit of what you're going to get out of your system. During this demo, you'll see the approach to both data warehousing and bridge interface solutions. However, as we progress, we're going to focus more on bridge and interfaces. At the end of this demo, please visit our website and let us know what you think. We pay very close attention to your feedback so that we can constantly improve the quality of what you get and get the most from your investment in your Timberline software. Let's kick this off like we do all of our training material, whether you're at a conference or you're doing classroom or you're doing web training. We'll start with simple, practical examples. Before we go too much further though, I'm going to talk about two systems today, two systems that need to talk to each other. In reality, many times you've got many more than two. However, the concepts will remain the same. So, so that we can minimize the brain pain and focus on the important stuff, we'll keep it simple by talking just about two. So, let's say you've got two systems. Program A and Program B. In our example, Program A is going to be a specialty system, something that's very unique and specific to your industry and that doesn't fit or get serviced by your back-end accounting or project system. Each system is going to have its own procedures and resulting information or data. So to put this in perspective, for data warehousing needs, we may have the need to report on data as though it's in one place, although it's in different systems. Alternatively, for bridge or interface needs, we may have the need to push or transfer or synchronize data from our specialty system over to our accounting system. So, so that we can get our minds in a creative thinking mode and put this thing in a perspective of your company, let's look at some examples. In this first example, our specialty system is a very unique customer rate and billing system that uh, handles billings to your customers that are very, very special and unique. In other words, not handled by your accounting or project system. So in this example, we've got a specialty system where the data or those receivables have to move into your backend system. In this example, uh, maybe you've got uh, many contractors, and maybe you've got a multi-tier contractor uh, uh, situation working on a very large project, and you need to get their change management data into one place so that you can do forecasting report uh, reports very easily for your upstream owner. These guys will all have their own uh, change management systems, change orders, whatnot, that need to feed into one place so that when you print those forecast reports, those pending and approved contract changes are all part of that report and your owner is seeing one-stop shopping where that project lives. In this example, maybe you've got property management systems with very unique government compliance reporting, things that uh, Timberline project management might not handle. So you've got a special program here. We may need to build a bridge or interface to feed uh, those rent rolls into your Timberline accounting. Another example, web-based project management systems for your remote projects. Uh, you may have a very specific project management solution where Timberline couldn't handle it. You went out and did something different. However, uh, that contract control stuff, uh, the billings, uh, financial data that's captured here, it needs to be transferred or synchronized into accounting or into Timberline. Another example, you might have uh, equipment charges that are done on a retroactive basis based on usage. Uh, you don't know what the charge rates will be until after the day, month, quarter, whatever period ends, and that's what, what's the foundation of the charge. Timberline doesn't do that, so you might have a special program that does, and then again, you can feed that revenue into Timberline uh, through an interface or through a bridge. You might have very, very specific and uh, complex financial allocation systems. Uh, that is so unique, you know, there's no accounting system that will handle that that I'm aware of. We might have to build something special here and then, f again, feed those entries into Timberline through a bridge or interface. So, 
We hope now that you're thinking about your programs, your different needs at your business, what you need to accomplish. This is, this is very important as it's going to lay the foundation for the rest of this demo. Let's say for a moment uh, that we're going we're gonna to focus on a report. Let's say for a moment that you uh, have a need to combine your data from these different systems onto one report. You need to print the report, grabbing data from System A and System B, have it hit the report so that as a person's reading the report, they have no idea those are in different systems. In some situations, it might be acceptable and a good, a good choice to have the report be the vehicle that combines the data. All right, there is no bridge, there is no interface, there is no data warehousing. The report gets its stuff from specialty programs, gets its stuff from the accounting programs, does what it does and prints it on the piece of paper as though it was from one uh, program. Your needs, the capabilities of each program, and report speed will typically be the driving decisions on whether or not this is a good solution for you. Alternatively, you may have a need to pour all of your data or the appropriate pieces of your data into one bucket and then report from that bucket. This solution has, has advantages and disadvantages from the prior example. Obviously, one of the big disadvantages is, is more cost. One of the big advantages, though, is flexibility and report speed. So as we ask you a lot of questions, or as your consultant is asking a lot of questions, these are the things that we're thinking about. Okay, before we move though, we've got two programs, A and B. They both pour their data into a data warehouse or combined bucket, and then the report is pulled from that, from that location. Okay, let's shift gears now, and let's talk about a bridge or system interface. In this example, we've got our two systems. We've got our specialty processes and data in that program and our accounting processes and data in that program. We may have the need to simply move data from our specialty program into accounting. One-way transfer of information. Or, alternatively, we may have the need to simply move data from accounting or project into our specialty. More times than not, it's bi-directional. We've got to move data both directions. A great example. Uh, let's go to our first uh, example we talked about in an earlier slide where we had a specialty billing system for our upstream customers. Well, we have to know what those customer IDs are. We have to know what the general ledger accounts are. We'll typically get that from accounting. So accounting has to push that data this way from right to left so we can pull valid accounts. However, when the processes are done and the data is created, then that data has to go back to accounting. So bi-directional. This concept of moving data back and forth is where a bridge or an interface comes in. The bridge or interface is the vehicle by which that data is moved uh, between the programs. This is where it all comes together. At a high level, you'll have some very important decisions to make. Does this bridge or interface, this in-between person, this in-between piece rather, does it require a person to do something or is it automatic? Big decision, big question. If a person does something, is it in manual, import, export, export out of one program into the other, and then export out of the specialty program and import into accounting? Are those, are those manual, manually initiated processes? Or, alternatively, is there an in-between program that handles that synchronization so that the person doesn't have to manually import export? Huge decisions. Considerations that you'll have to keep in mind is, is really, are really all around controlling your data so that you have a proper flow of information between the two systems. For instance, how easy is it for a human to make human error? For example, not transferring data from one day and it never gets transferred, transferring twice, you know, things that humans are going to, are, human beings are going to uh, make a mistake with. Other considerations, how much control can be built into the bridge to maintain that reconciliation between these two systems? Also, error correction is always a huge topic. 
In other words, say you've got, and going back to our previous example, an AR customer invoice that was generated here, flowed, flew, flowed to accounting, I guess that's a word, and everything's nice. However, uh, at some point in time, that, that transaction has changed. Maybe it was an incorrect rate, maybe it's voided, for whatever reason. What kind of vehicle do we have in place to get that error correction from the specialty program back over to accounting to maintain that reconciliation so they both have the same information in them? And also, a huge consideration is cost. These things that we're talking about are really risk. And then the more money you want to spend, the more we can decrease that risk. So a big, a big challenge is to sit with your consultant, evaluate, understand both systems, evaluate the risk, and put it in terms of cost-benefit. If we do these things, here's what it'll cost, here's the things it can avoid. These are some of the things we should keep in mind as we talk about the next two slides. In this example, we've got a manual process in between. We've got a person who has to remember to do something. All right, They may initiate exports and imports. Uh, uh, this is the example of, of humans with the potential of doing human error. Okay. In this example, we have the concept of what we've come to call a traffic cop. We have an in-between program that uh, houses data from both sides, and it knows when transactions live in the specialty program and haven't reached the accounting side. And so when it runs, it says, hey, you five transactions haven't gotten over here, so I'm going to send you. Or it says, hey, you've changed a transaction. I'm going to send you over here. This traffic cop maintains the integrity of the information between both systems. Obviously, this is the most dead integrity. Obviously, though, it's the most cost. OK, we hope that this video helped you to understand uh, the concepts of data warehousing, bridges, and interfaces, and the questions and decisions that will have to be addressed. We thank you for joining us. In closing, we suggest that you keep in mind what well, cost, you know, it must be a consideration when you're uh, planning development. Keep in mind, though, the cost of ongoing maintenance, the cost of troubleshooting, the cost of, of reconciliation, the cost of lack of data for decision making while problems are being fixed. Those costs can quickly outweigh the cost of development of your situation. So we suggest that you don't lose sight of that and just keep that in mind as you're making choices on uh, how your solution is going to work for you. Please remember, visit our website. Go to the uh, contact tab and please send us a note. Tell us what you thought about this video and how we can improve it so that you get the most uh, from your time. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.